I have so many things that we're going to talk about today. First, we have to explain like Paige and I basically were FaceTiming yesterday before we had this interview. I like to do that with my guests because I just want to like be on a closer level before we get on here and talk about like deep, deep shit. Yeah. And so which we, I love because I right? was actually really nervous. Yeah. No, so yeah, that's better. OK. That, and I remember <laughs> Hannah saying the same thing. And I'm like, I'm not trying to ruin your life. I actually want right. to have like a fun conversation. I'm not trying to exploit you. Um, right. And also maybe it's like a backwards thing that I want you to feel more comfortable with me and then you will exploit yourself. But like, who knows? OK, so anyways, you're smart. You're smart. Right. Right. So Paige and I are talking. And first and foremost, just to like lay it out for you guys listening, we don't technically know each other. Mm-hmm. We've never met in person. Mm-hmm. but we kind of know each other through through two avenues one is through hannah mm-hmm. and then the other is through your ex-boyfriend yes <laughs> which is such a crazy story we, i want us to both tell it from our pov because okay. i didn't know okay so daddy i didn't know if Paige knew this and so i was like I was on FaceTime with her and I'm like, okay, like, listen, like, I just want to like ask if we can talk about this on the podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. I know, sort of know your ex-boyfriend and I didn't know if she knew. And all of a sudden I felt the need to clarify, like, I haven't fucked him. I promise I haven't (laughs) fucked him. Like, fuck, I know how that sounds so bad. So this is my part of the story. okay? Okay. And then you're going to tell yours. Okay. So all the way back to when I was living in like the infamous, we call it like the 301. That was where I was like living with rats, poor as shit, had no money, living with two Mm -hmm. roommates. Like I was living in a closet. Every time I brought a guy back, they were like, oh my God, this is the cutest closet. Where's your bedroom? I'm like, this is my bedroom. Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Like it was that type. But those are usually like the best, I feel like. Okay. I got that. Yeah. Then I, it was before I started the show, I wanted to get on Raya. Everyone wants to get on Raya. And I remember putting in my application and the minute that I got accepted, it was like all of us, the three of us in the house were like, oh, we're now on Raya. Like all of us are going to use it. Mm -hmm. And you know how in New York, like I almost wanted it more for a connection to men and their friend group rather than just like a dating. You know what I mean? Like New York is so like you need to Like you wanted a circle. You want a circle of guys. Yeah, Yeah. I got it. And so then why not Raya where they're like rich and successful, like added Mm -hmm. bonus, added bonus. So I go on Raya and one of the first guys I see is soon to be your ex-boyfriend. And I remember I kept seeing him and then my other roommate got on Raya and Mm -hmm. I don't remember who matched with him but maybe both of us yeah you know, I think both of you both of us okay yeah and he was one of those guys that always had plans every time we messaged him he was like we're gonna be here with my friends blah blah, blah. like perfect guy yep but we never ended up meeting up with him and I remember I'm pretty sure I have his number somewhere in my phone and we texted like once being like oh. um like he was like we're here tonight do you want to come and we were getting ready and we chose different plans and it was just not meant to be fast forward to me seeing Hannah and stalking her life and then seeing you and I remember seeing him on either your Instagram or the show or whatever mm-hmm. and being like oh my god did I fuck up oh my god like <laughs> is he such a good suitor because you know when like a hot girl date yeah. to do that you never went for all of a sudden you're like, real estate goes up. <laughs> right I was like fuck like did I fuck up and like he's got his like hot car and like all this shit yeah. and I'm like whoa like this girl looks like she's living the life and I was single at the time I was like did I fuck up you're like okay. that could have been me right okay so my point of view on this story okay. is I was friends with him for a while okay. and I was like in that friend group. He has an amazing friend group. We always had plans. We were always doing things. And then all of a sudden I was like, I think I like him. Like, I think I want to date him. But we were such close friends that like I knew everyone he was sleeping with. Like I knew what dates he was going out on. So I had to pretend like that didn't bother me. <gasps> and I will never forget the day that he was like, guess who I matched with on Raya? No. And I was like, who? And he goes, Alex Cooper. And I was like, fuck. No. I called, I called my mom and I go, I can't tell him now that I like him because it's going to look like I just don't want him to go out on a date with this like super hot blonde. Shut up. Because the- I... Because I always was like, deep down, your type is blondes. Like, I am, I'm not your type. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, I don't really have a type. So I remember when that happened. Then he matched with your friend. And I was like, fuck. Fuck. Like, she kind of looks like me. She's a lot more successful. Like, there's no way he's going to pick me over these two girls. 
And then for whatever happened, like you guys never met up or it just like was never meant to be. And right. then we started dating. And I was like, whew, that was a close <laughs> one. It was a close one. So thank God we always went on different plans. Wait, yes. that is so crazy. The fact that you called your mom. <laughs> I, know, I was like, mom. And she was like, who are they? Like, let me see a picture. And she was like, ooh, ooh yeah, they are pretty. <laughs> Dude, it's so crazy because we were talking about this. Like, ha- New York is so small. So small. It's and people actually think terrifying. it's not, and it's no. so small. And so having, like, I saw him, like, 19 million times on mm-hmm. Raya. And he was, like, the Raya man to me at that point. And yeah. he, he does have a good Raya profile. He does. I will give him he that. He does. Yeah. It's very, it's a good, it's a suitor, a full suitor. Like, you're ready to yeah. infiltrate. So you didn't meet him on Raya. I didn't meet him on Raya. I met him... Oh my God, probably in like 2015. I had just gotten single and I went to a Halloween party at his apartment and I walked into the apartment and I was with a group of my friends and we didn't even see the guys that were in there yet because we only knew one guy there. Right. And I walked in and I said, dibs on whoever owns this apartment. (laughs) And my friends were like, you can't call dibs. And I was like, I just did. I just did. Because whosoever apartment this is, I want this. Yeah. I was like, this is my life now. So, okay. So tell me first, like, where you're from, where you went to college, how old you are. Okay. So I'm from upstate New York, from Albany. I went to college in Albany in this really small school called St. Rose. Okay. I lived at home for college. So I didn't have, like, the typical, like, crazy college. I was in a sorority type thing. And I'm such a relationship girl that I had a boyfriend all through college. So I'm 28. I moved to New York like the month after I graduated college. I was like 22 and I just I went off like I went crazy because it was the first time I'd like lived on my own. I lived with two girlfriends for the first year and then I moved out when our lease was up, lived by myself. And I've lived in New York now for almost six years. (gasps) Wait, yeah. the fact that you didn't have a conventional college experience yeah. makes so much sense that then you get to New York City and that's almost like you're treating it like your college experience. Absolutely. I went out every single night. Like Monday nights, like industry night oh. was my night. I was like, if I am not a catch at Monday night at 10 p.m., like what am I doing? What am I, doing? What am I actually doing? What, did you have a job at the time? No, I had no job. How, my parents were, were like helping with rent. My parents were financing everything for me. They were like, "We're giving you six months, and if you can't figure it out in six months, you have to come home." So, like month five, I was like, "Fuck!" Like I need to figure this out. I ended up getting a job. I interned for a little, and then I ended up getting a job at ABC News as an assistant. Oh. And I was like, "Okay, great. great. Now I can like pay my own rent. Like I'll be fine." I remember I had a sales job at a magazine, mm-hmm. and I was making no money. I could barely afford rent, and I couldn't pay like from a paycheck that I got at my job. I, that wouldn't even equate one paycheck of like rent. And so yeah. I would have to call my grandmother and my dad and like schmooze with them and be like hey dad like what's up and he's like Alex I'll put like $500 in your bank account I'm like I love you I got my first paycheck in New York and I called my mom and I go mom I think I have to call HR like they took a ton of money out like what's going on she goes hi that's called taxes and I was like is anyone talking about this and she goes I don't know only the whole country like get it together and I like didn't know my social security number literally until like last year that I memorized it I had to save mine in my phone as like a contact like social and my dad's like that's the dumbest thing you can do I'm like how am I supposed to memorize that yeah they're like my mom's like someone's gonna get your phone you're gonna get I'm like it's It's okay okay. there's no money to steal from me anyway yeah like no one wants my identity right now dude four dollars This past year, I was doing my taxes on TurboTax by myself. I'm a walking out of TurboTax. I always say, like, my biggest fear is going to jail for tax evasion just because I'm dumb. Like, not because I'm trying to get one over on anyone. Paige, it would literally be for, like, a couple hundred dollars. (laughs) Like, no one gives a fuck. I got so nervous, too. I'm like, oh, my God, I think I forgot, like, this one check I got from, like, an influencer company back in the day when I did, like, a a bang energy ad. No, I never did that. And people were like, that's a couple hundred dollars. Like, no one's coming after you. I'm like, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's scary. No, glad we went over our taxes. (laughs) is everyone happy that we went over that dude i will never forget this is the shit where you're when you're like poor in new york i had i remember it was my 
Paige, where'd you go? <laughs> I'm here. Paige's <laughs> camera just flipped upside down. Okay, when I was in um New York and it was really desperado times, like yeah. ramen noodles, I was on unemployment <laughs> checks, like shit was mm-hmm. dark. I remember I started going out with this one promoter dude all the time because I was like raging my face off and I like I was yeah. just trying to like live my best life, but it was like so grimy. And he talked about the model apartments. Have you ever heard of them in New York? I've heard of them. Okay. I've never been to one, though. Okay, I have never been to one, but I've seen pictures. And so, Daddy Gang, if you... I think it's kind of interesting. Like, so Mm -hmm. we would be going out, and he would always... And no one knows that this is, like, a thing in New York. Right? Yeah. Every time you go out, there's, like, the hottest girls, like, so fucking skinny, just, like, standing there looking like they haven't eaten in 10 days. Yeah. They also look like... Miserable. Part, miserable. They miserable. Miserable. And so they're standing there, and I remember as I got closer to this promoter, who honestly was the weirdest man I've ever met in my life, he, they usually he offered me and my my old roommate to come into the model home. And the saddest thing is how poor we were at that time we Mm -hmm. kind of questioned it we were like hold on you don't have to pay rent you don't have to pay rent but then he was like yeah but you have to come out and party five nights a week every single night yeah and it was like you have oh we and it's actually really sad right like it's almost like a form of like they're like like having a pimp yes like it's like wait i don't want to be forced to go out anywhere i don't want to be and And like i'm sure in the beginning that's so fun right but after like two weeks i'd be like brah brah i kind of lay in my (laughs) bed and i remember i went to like vandal one night for drinks and like dinner pre like you know when they fucking buy you oh r.i.p vandal is it over i think so oh wait really did they close i think so I feel like I drove by like a couple weeks it's ago and there was like graffiti. Honestly, yeah, like probably for end the of an era. It's probably really yeah. Up and down, that's over. Wait, what? Yeah, so sad. I used to pop off. At up and down was a place to be. <laughs> a place. So I'm at Vandal and there's all these girls that look as if they are ready to just end it all. And I'm getting yeah. concerned almost. And like one are, bad day away <laughs> from just <laughs> they're gone. Off. One day yeah. you never see them again. And never. I'm like, at, finally, I'm like asking because now I've gone out two nights in a row. And I'm like, are mm-hmm. you okay to this one girl? And she was like, this is my fifth night out. And I'm just like so exhausted. I don't want to be here. And she said to me, no. None of us drink. We never drink anymore when we come out. We are miserable and like we mm-hmm. hate our lives. And I was like yeah. the one that's like getting blasted because I'm like, I'm not here as a like yeah. a model that's getting paid to be here. And I just remember like it was so sad to see those girls d- like having to do that. But like it is yeah. like when you're when you don't have money, like I considered it. But then seeing the, the party right. lifestyle, I was like, no, I'm not into it. You got to respect the hustle. Like, no, I do. Right? I respect it, though. I'm like, look, if I couldn't figure it out and thank god i have like a family who like if something happened like they would help me but i'd be like fuck yeah why would i not do that there's so many times where like people will dm me for feet pictures and like i really contemplated like dude right i remember tana like i'll send you three grand i'm like should i (laughs) but but oh my god who gives a fuck if if guys anybody out there wants feet pictures slide in my fucking dms i just (laughs) want to make sure that i'm not getting like catfish and they're like i'm gonna send pics and then they like don't send me money let's talk about your life in quarantine you're single right now i'm single how long have you been single i've been single for six months september october november december january february yeah six months and how long did it take you to get back into the dating game oh Alex. Okay, fine. Took me, let me see, uh, 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so not great. Not great. My ex was like, I don't love this. And I was like, I got to go. And you're like, um, I do yeah. love this. This is great for me. Yep. Took me a cool 48 hours to be like, wow, this is, I missed this. Tell me about your roster. Like now that you're back single, tell me about your dating process. And like, are you on dating apps? How mm-hmm. many people are you talking to? Give us the whole scoop. Okay, so I am on dating apps. I'm on Hinge and Raya. Hinge is trash. Trash Trash humans, trash people. Everyone's trash. I just I just like to see like what people look like and I'm like, no, no, no. No. So I've never matched with anyone on Hinge. I've never like gone on a date with anyone on Hinge. I have (laughs) in my like career of dating, I've probably been on Raya for like, I don't know, maybe like three or four years now. I've only ever gone on two dates. And they were actually pretty good. We wow. They're actually pretty good. <laughs> Dates, but have you met up with them like with their friends or just literally you've only met two people off Raya? So the first guy was 
very good looking on his profile and for some reason like I didn't google him which is so out of character for me we get out on the date and this is pre-summer house we're sitting at the on the date we're like at some like pizza place or something and this girl leans over to him and goes I just want to let you know like I love I love you so much and I was like, yo, who the fuck is this? <laughs> You're like, guy? I have to pee so bad. Run to the yeah. bathroom. Google. Run to the bathroom. Google. He's like some actor on an NBC show. We probably went on like five dates total. The sweetest. Wait, I he wonder if great. we went on the same date with the same man. What was his name? <laughs> Wait, he was, he's on a show, right? And he's, yes. he's. Does he play a doctor? Yes! Yeah. Stop. 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 Is his first name? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Dude! Oh, wait. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I, okay. He, I remember he was the sweetest guy. The sweetest. I, I was like, this is my husband. Like, this is who I should love. And there's yeah. just, it's just, I, okay. I remember my date with him was, I'm pretty sure this is serial killer, which I would never usually do. But I think because he was a famous actor, like, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like he was going to kill me, which now with right. the Army Hammer shit, like, maybe should have thought twice. <laughs> you never bit. really know. Um, <laughs> So I showed up to his apartment in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cutest apartment. I was like, artsy. Artsy, like Lux living, like the upstairs, the down, like the whole thing. And so yep. we had like one of the most like romantic nights, like making you drinks, right? Like the yep. books, the whole thing. The whole thing. And then he was like, like smoking a cigarette out the window. <laughs> I was like, vibey as Paige, fuck. when I yeah. tell you he did the same exact thing with me, wow. open the window, you sit yeah. on the couch, he sits on yeah. the ledge. Stop! I'm dead right now. I'm Dude, de- does he do this to every girl? He must. I'm, but like, here's the thing: when we stopped talking, I was never like mad at him because I was like, no. you know what? I fuck with you, and if you ever call me again, I will Dude, meet up right, with you. I remember he gave me. It was our first, and uh, no, I, we we did two dates. We laid in his bed. We only made out, and we watched mm-hmm. a movie. And then before I left, it was the randomest thing. But he was like, "Do you want a luggage bag?" And I was like. Sorry, sir, what? <laughs> like, are you blacking out? Like, and he was like, I got an extra away luggage bag from this company. Would you want it? Like, I have too many of them. And meanwhile, I'm still poor as fuck at this yeah. moment. So I'm like, You're like, yes. Pl- I was like trying to act all suave. I'm like, I mean, like, I don't know if I need it, but like, yeah, I guess like I'll if you don't have it. room for it, like I'll I'll take it off your hands. Literally, I'm like a TJ Maxx one that's like fully disintegrating <laughs> and I'm like sweating, like wanting it so bad. So he gives me an away thing. I left that night and then we went on one more date. We went to the spot spotted pig and mm-hmm. we just went for like a brunch. And I remember after that thinking, this dude is so nice, but there was just it's- something something i don't know what it is but like the nicest and i could see me like being friends with him right and like randomly he'll send me a dm or like like a picture or something i'm just like i like how did it from a distance right how did it go with you guys so we had gone on we went on our first date like a dinner date and we oh my god i'm so sorry it's okay if it's hannah it is hannah (laughs) Hannah, stop (laughs) calling Paige. um she's getting jealous getting jealous so we had gone on our first date we went on a dinner date which how I was like realized who he was because I'd never watched the show that he was on so I didn't know and then we went on a second date he took me to a play (gasps) I know and like usually so not me like if someone was like hey want to go to a play like fuck no so we go to this play yeah and in like the intermission of it he looks at me and he was like this is lame you want to get out of here and I was just like I'm wet (laughs) Yeah, I was like, yes. So we go back to his apartment. I don't sleep with him. He asked me to like run lines with him. And I was like, stop. I was like, I'm a movie star now. I'm pretty now sure I'm he like- asked me to do the same thing because he had, he has the fat scripts, all the paper. Yes. Dude, it's literally like a dream, but also now it's scaring me because when you're saying these things, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay, so you're running so lines. I'm like in my head, I'm like, what dress am I wearing to the Emmys this year? Like, obviously I am his date to the Emmys. Then I think I I hung out with him one more time. It was like a snowstorm. And I like took my ass on the subway to Brooklyn in a snowstorm. And that was like the night I slept over. And then I woke up the next morning. He had to like go film super early. So I left at like 6 a.m. And like never really talked to him again. Like, yeah. Why didn't didn't you? Did he not reach out or you didn't? 
I think he he reached out. This is so long ago now, but he right? reached out the next morning, like, "Hey, like, did you get home okay?" And I was like, "Yep." And we chatted for like a little, and then he just like never hit me up again. And I certainly wasn't <sighs> right. gonna ask him to hang. He's one of those guys that's so it's like daddy gang. Think of a guy that's like so perfect on paper. So your perfect. parents would love him. My, I told my mm-hmm. mom about him obviously, and she was like, "Oh, oh my course. god, right, right." But then there's something that like the spark. It's just yeah. like ah. Uh, Good guy. Yep, good guy. Would love I to hope he finds me the too. love of his life. You know, me like too. I wish good things for him. Mine ended because I remember he wanted to go to like away to like upstate New York or something. He probably did that to you too. No. Because he was buying a house. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did we date him at the same time? It must have been it, this was probably like three years ago. Wait, yeah. Yeah. So I'm dead. <laughs> he's trying to buy He's trying to buy a house in upstate New York. Yep. And he was I like, don't think he ever bought oh, okay. it. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, <laughs> that was okay. wild. So you are fully single right now. Fully single. Tell me about the dating life. So the dating life, I like to keep a healthy a healthy bench, a healthy mm. roster. I always say, I feel like a mom because I'm always like, I'm only as happy as like my least happy one. Oh, you know? <laughs> God. Whoa. So, so like I like to keep them all happy. Um, but recently I cleared them all. I was just like, I don't fuck with any of you anymore. Wow. I had like four guys that I was talking to. Um, One of them ghosted me and left on his own. Wait, why? I don't really know. Oh. We'll never get to the bottom of it. You didn't ask, did you? Did you just like text him one day and he stopped answering? So we were texting normally one day and then he just like stopped answering. And then a few days went by. And so I sent the follow up text like, hello hi remember me like hello Hello? like is this thing on like what's going on you there and never responded and I was like okay well then so he left I had gotten rid of one of my other guys because he had like just gotten out of a really serious relationship I could tell he just like wanted to have fun and like totally we had a lot of fun but it there wasn't enough spark to like like, run his course yeah I was just like you're like cool and like I'll answer your text but like we're probably never gonna chill again like one-on-one okay that makes sense like not (laughs) worth the sex Right. Like, you'd rather be home with your vibrator than, like, having him over. Right. And I'm, like, I really just, like, I want to do my skin routine and not feel weird, like, putting pimple cream on at your apartment. So, like, I'm going to stay home. Totally. Um, And then I have another guy who's, like, great, super nice, shows me a lot of attention. But I'm just in this mood where I'm, like, I don't want to be someone's girlfriend. Like, the thought of someone being, like, hey, this is my girlfriend, Paige. Mm, Not right now. Doesn't it doesn't work. work for me. It doesn't vibe for me right now. Didn't you mm-hmm. tell me you're hooking up with a guy that's like younger? Not younger. So age. I was hooking up with a guy who was younger. He was two years younger than me, which. Fascinating. I don't, it's fascinating because it, he was like the first guy I'd hooked up with since breaking up with my older boyfriend. Right. So it was like such a switch. Oh, and there's so, they're like pros of hooking up with someone younger or your age. But then there's like such a long con list. We would have so much fun going out. But there's just something about guys your age where I'm like, well, do you have like a plan? Right. Like, but then those were things that I hated when I dated someone older. Because he would be like, do you have a plan? I'd be like, shut the fuck no. up. No. No. <laughs> like, Dating an older guy, it's so mm -hmm. crazy because you go in waves. Like, you want to date the older guy because, like you said, they have plans and it's hot that they they know the places to go and the reservations and they have the pool and they have the money and the cars and the apartments and all the nice things. And you kind of feel so like, oh, my God, and this little dainty bitch that's next to him in his fucking G-Wagon. We're rolling around town and I don't have to do anything. But then when they start to turn to you in that car and look you in your soul and say, so I could see myself marrying you. Where are you mm-hmm. at, girlfriend? And yeah. you're like, like, hmm. oh. like excuse oh. you? Oh. I mean, my ex was amazing. Like, right. he really was. He's, right. like, on paper the most perfect. Right. But when he would challenge me with, like, you know, like, if you became a mom, you probably can't, like, stay up till 4 a.m. anymore. And, like, he would just, like, say certain things that, like, had me thinking. And then, like, if you tell me to do something, I have to now do the opposite. Right, 100%. Not and even. I'm like, I have I have a dad, so I don't – and he really likes me, so I don't need you to tell me no. what to do. Like, I'll figure it out. It's – that's so true, too, because then the older guy, it's like – you you start to love the idea but then immediately once you break up with the older guy I remember breaking up with an older guy and immediately wanting to be like should I like 
fuck like a guy that just got out of college just because like <laughs> I want to go to the grungy apartment yeah. I want him to like want to show up for me and like because you feel like you're better than yes them. and that's like no one talks about that feeling like when I'm with a guy and I know for a fact that like I've lowered my standards to be with him I'm like you don't even I, give like, a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a shit. And it's like, fine. I will put the pimple cream on. Like, what are you going to do about it, bro? Right. You're not going to leave. I'm going to put my pimple cream on while you eat me out. And <laughs> I'm going to be relaxed. I am going to be so chilling. Right. And it's more like if you think you're actually going to get into a serious relationship with that person, that you're like, okay, what are their goals? Like, right. how, like is this going to be a long-term thing? Like, in five years, are we going to be able to, like, get an apartment together? Or are we going to be broke as fuck? And I'm just not at the stage where I am seeing anyone that I'm like, I'm going to, this is going to be my husband. Totally. So I don't really like give a shit what their goals are. Yeah. Like, I just want to know, like, do we have fun? Because this is what we were yeah. saying. We were like, a part of me sometimes just wants like a guy that has a good group of friends that doesn't mm-hmm. put pressure on me. And it's just like a good go to time. That's all yeah. I want right now. And, and then New York really is so small that <sighs> it's like, if you're with one guy in one group, like everyone knows you're hooking up totally and that and that like that's one of my rules that it took me a little while in new york to learn that like every guy knows each other and you can only sleep with one guy there's clearly a story behind that tell me the story (laughs) you're like all right thanks for calling me out here we go (laughs) um this is probably one of my best oh new york city stories my girlfriend's like i always tell this story to whoever wants to hear it i'm reclining i'm ready (laughs) So I was probably like 23, 24, and I met this guy, gorgeous, 6'2", dark hair, dark eyes, beard, dressed, impeccable. His apartment, downtown Soho, I was just like, I love you. I love you. I will do whatever you want me. He would hit me up at 2 a.m. Hey, come over. I'm putting my sweats on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm ready. I like I just washed my makeup off. I'm putting it back, back on. on. Only for you, baby. <clears throat> Only. So one night he was supposed to meet me out. And for whatever reason, I felt like he was getting distant. Felt like he was getting back with his ex-girlfriend. Didn't really know what was happening. He never shows up. So because I didn't have like a crazy college experience, I'd never had a one night stand. And this was the only time I'd ever done it. And I'm out with my girlfriends. I forget where we even were. I think we were at Acme. Oh, the shit gets yeah. weird at Acme. Shit gets weird. You have no cell phone <laughs> service. Shit you gets start weird. to just do shit it and was like just really odd. run for things you would never do. But you're like, no one can contact never. me. Never. I'm down here. I'm going for it. I might as well be in a different country. Like the time zone is probably different. Like Acme is like. It's, it's a rare breed. It. It's a rare breed. So I'm standing there and some guy is standing at a table next to me. And I could just tell that we were both like looking at each other. And I was like, whatever. So we go over to his table. We're chatting. He's like, my apartment is like pretty close. I don't think it was. but (laughs) Like literally in Queens. You're like, right, right, right. Here we go. And I'm like with my one girlfriend. She's like, whatever. Just like go back to his apartment. This guy's not even going to text you. He's probably with another girl. Like you deserve it. So I go back to this guy's apartment. I sleep with him. I wake up the next morning and I'm like, I want to kill myself. Fuck. Like, I'm like, I got, if I don't get out of here in four seconds, I remember him being like, so what's your number? And I was like, probably not. Probably not. I was like, probably probably not. not. I don't know where my phone is. It's still at Acme. Gotta go by. Somehow you called the number. I can't remember it. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, So I leave. I'm in an Uber back to my apartment. The original guy texts me. Hey, it'd probably be cool if you didn't go out and sleep with my best friend. And it, my whole body shuts down. My entire, my stomach falls to my butt. Like, I'm like, I'm going to throw up. So he, I text him back and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, first of all, Paige, I fell asleep last night. (gasps) And second of all, one of my best friends just called me and goes, oh my God, I hooked up with like such a great girl last (laughs) night. Like, I think I'm going to take her on a date. (laughs) And I go, what's her name? And he said, your name. And I was like, uh, you're like that wasn't like, me though that wasn't me <laughs> ask him for my number he probably is he doesn't even have the number that wrong girl Fuck! wrong wrong i never spoke to him again and it was it pains me to this day to know that i fucked up so badly like that and i've never had a one night stand ever again yeah it was tra- my trauma. mouth is wide open because i feel like i've had a similar situation where <laughs> the fact that you were 
already feeling so shitty about yourself so shitty you're in mm-hmm. that uber being like i need to take 17 showers and i need to pray yep. to the mother of god that i completely can erase this at some point in my mm-hmm. life like you feel gross it's gross. one of those I was that like, you my even- mom didn't raise no. me like this no. i don't just sleep with guys i mean oh. i was like this is disgusting and it's also disgusting. like the guy you met at acme yeah, like was you're like, oh. like you're in the basement you wake up he doesn't even look the same you're like why no. the fuck did i do that no. it's awful no. and so and also i hate those where I've done this before you're out and you're sad about another Mm -hmm. guy not answering you so you think the good thing to do is to go with another dude but really it's just go the fuck home because just go home right and the fact that he was just sleeping he just was, sleep. He was just, I mean, was that we don't actually know. He probably don't. wasn't just yeah, sleeping. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but like for the story and like he looks right. better than he probably did. Like Dude. Yeah, it was So then you never heard from him again. We know ne- I never heard from him again. And I would like see him out because New York again is so small. And like now if I ever see him, like we say hi, but he's just over it. Yeah over those are the worst i'm so sorry for you because like i've done some fucked up shit especially when you're intoxicated and you think you're doing the right thing and it's just yep. like you just fuck yourself over um okay Paige, what is your routine when you're like tr- when you're going to like sleep with a guy like i have said on my yeah. podcast like it's it's not a religious thing i just don't usually fuck guys on the first date only because you <laughs> it depends like usually it's because i'm going into it with like a specific mindset like i want right. to trap this man <clears throat> and i mm-hmm. want to do it in like a very very calculated way I've now told my best friend Lauren who's single because she was like oh fuck like should I not fuck on the first date I'm like Lauren you're looking to just have sex so absolutely fuck on the first date find out what his dick is like find out what his dick game is like and then if you don't like it get out and go to another one Mm -hmm. but what's your kind of style so it definitely took me a few years (laughs) to like figure out my dating style and I it it def you're right. It depends on what you want from that man. Like mm-hmm. if you go out on a date and you're like, damn, I really like him. Like I want to hang out with him. My rule is don't sleep with him at least until like after the third totally. date. Three dates is usually my rule. Now, have I slept with people way too soon? Absolutely. Totally. Like everyone gets too many tequilas. Like, but there are guys that like, if you sleep with them on the first date, they don't give a shit. Like if they really like you and doesn't it's meant matter. to be, it'll it doesn't matter. But a lot of my guy friends, which is such a double standard. Totally. They obviously want to sleep with you on the first date. But if you let them, even though they're fucking trying to, if you let them, they're immediately turned off. It's so. So it's such. It's so annoying because like my guy friends will say this to me and I'm like, okay, so if it's going to turn you off that they sleep with you on the first date, then why are you trying to sleep with them? And they're like, to see if we can. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's infuriating to me. But a part of me also thinks if you do on the first night, if you are the specific girl that can play it the right way the minute after you fuck and you do it not too like quickly where you like get up and you act like I do this all the time and you like quickly get up, wipe yourself off with your hands, rub it on his carpet, be like, peace out, dude, see you around. Imagine wiping (laughs) yourself and then rubbing it on his. I just had a visual of me doing that and like. I kind of want to try it at right? some point. Like, or, I don't need no man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Good night. Thank that you. is like a little too suave where they're like, whoa, like she's got a system. Yeah. But if you linger too long and then you're Miss Clingy, they're like, Kate, you were just so easy. Yep. Like you do this with every guy also. And like, you're like trying to wife, like I'm trying to like not wife you up. There's yeah. got to, I think there's a very specific way to girls. If you ever do fuck them on the first time and then you're like, fuck, I think I like this dude. Yeah. It's got to be a really suave way, which I can talk about another episode, but like specifically waiting a little bit longer and then getting mm-hmm. up and being super like acting like you never did this before. But yeah. like without saying yeah. I never yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah. And then you leave. Yeah. So you, so you usually wait a little bit if you think he has potential if I think he has potential I will wait until the third date because then at that point they're so into you like they want to sleep with you so badly and I just feel like it makes it better there's I love sexual tension like the build-up I feel like is the best part of it and like I love a chase just as much as guys do but like it's different for girls like if I want to sleep with him I know I'm gonna be no one's gonna say no like that's a guy but I love like the are we are we not what's it gonna be like is it like the sexual tension so my rule is the third date have you ever had one of those things where you think like 
damn, we should have just left it at sexual tension. Was there ever someone in a group that you ended up hooking up with and you were like, why we, I almost liked the flirting stage more than like the actual act of doing it. Wow. That's a really good question. And I don't think, I don't think so. And I'm not trying to say like, I'm so good. at No, no, I get what you're saying. (laughs) No, but like, I don't think I've ever been like, shoot, I wish I didn't sleep with him. It wasn't what Dude, I thought I liked the flirting better. I Why I brought that to mind was because something just popped into my head. I had a situation where I had this like brilliant thing that just happened to happen to me. And I gave it as advice on Call Her Daddy. It wasn't intentional. I met this guy mm-hmm. on Raya and I went on a date with him and the chemistry just wasn't there. But yeah. after the date, he brought me to this bar and all of his friends were there and they were such a cool group of friends in New York. Mm-hmm. And so I started to hang out with him a little bit longer than I should have which Mm -hmm. is maybe a little fucked up because I kind of wanted to like hang with their group of friends. And here's the thing. Guys are just as much social climbers than like guys think girls are. I've actually met some of the most social climby guys in New York that I'm like, it's so annoying that girls have that like stigma to them because you will literally. Or just as bad. Yeah. You would suck a dick in the bathroom if it meant that you're 100% getting the table at One Oak next to the fucking DJ booth, you piece of shit. Uh, thousand percent so I start infiltrating this friend group and I went strategically which I think was very smart on my part right for the girls and I befriended Mm -hmm. the girls because I knew a lot of girls probably try to infiltrate because there were a lot of hot guys in the group and they would be like okay this girl's just trying to fuck yeah and I wasn't even trying to fuck I just wanted like a good group of friends so finally after like months I would go out and meet them every weekend and like I had a good group of friends And then there was an athlete in that group that would occasionally pop in that was actually on an ex. I used to be on my ex's professional athletic team. So they used to be teammates. Okay. And so naturally I wasn't dating my ex at the time. So I was kind of like, is this fucked up? But like so fucking hot. Cause I wasn't going to on good terms with my ex. And I was like, wait, this is so fun. So he would every weekend have a new chick on his arm and Mm -hmm. we would make crazy eye contact. The sexual tension was insane. (sighs) The eye contact. It's that's what it is for me. And we're like across the table from each other and we're not talking. And we had matched on Raya like months and months before. And neither of us had messaged each other. So Mm -hmm. we knew who, who each other was. He knew who I was. He knew who my ex was. And Mm -hmm. then finally, after so much sexual tension back and forth for like so long, one night, it just got a little too wild. It was one of those New York nights where like we go back to someone's baller apartment. It's Mm -hmm. 5 a.m. People are drinking, doing drugs, like everyone's up. It's like one of those best nights. And then he ended up leaving the girl he was with and we went back to my apartment and we didn't have sex, but we did like everything but. And I woke up and I just knew like why did I do that (laughs) because it wasn't that great he's kind of doesn't have the best personality but it was just like the chase and and the forbiddenness that I was into and the minute that I woke up I could tell we both even were just kind of like we're gonna have to see each other at like the day drink today and like we're not gonna date like we're too much both on our own like we're in our own shit also my ex is like your friend like you're a weird like it was just a whole thing and I I hate that. that day we had just kept it at the flirtatious eye contact. And I feel like, I don't know if this is like specific to New York, but because everyone knows everyone and everyone's friends, I've been in that situation where like you're hooking up with a guy in a friend group and then like that kind of falls off and like you don't really know if you like him. And then one random night, one of the other friends comes along and you're like, damn, like you're kind of showing me attention. You hook up with him and then you're like, fuck. Why like, did I, I do that? Yeah. Like, why did I do that? That's there's so, oh, yeah. It's so And I think anyone listening, because I have a lot of people always writing in being like, should I hook up like there's sexual tension between me and like one of my best guy friends I think sometimes leaving the sexual tension is better than actually going for it because the sex is in is a moment the after sex is a long fucking time and so when you're then going in social settings almost think okay we're gonna have sex it will probably be great or not what happens after? What are we going to do yeah. after? If you Unless this person, unless you had like love at first yes, sight. done. Like then yeah. it's probably not. Like I have definitely been in a group of guy friends where I have slept with one of the guys and I'm like, I really like this person. And then there's another friend who's like kind of always hitting on me. And I'm like, I love this. Yeah. And I haven't slept with him. And it like, it's way better than if we were to actually do it then like even though there's such a double standard and it's annoying but that's what it is like the guys are gonna think of you as like 
Yeah, two of us like slept yeah. with you. It, and it's like, I hate that feeling. My mom was saying something to me because she was like, it's so annoying me because her friend kept saying things about like her son's friends that would be like, oh, he's such a great guy. He just has to get it out of his system. He's like hooking up with a bunch of girls and then he's going to be an amazing husband. Can you imagine someone ever saying she just has to fuck around with yep. all these guys, get it out of her system. Then she's going to be an amazing wife. Why is it a Every, double standard? Go fuck no, yourselves. It's so annoying because all of my guy friends, this, oh my God, this brings up such a good point because all of my guy friends are like, we're not ready for relationships. And I was like, no, I totally, like, I get that. Like you don't get in one if you don't think that you can be faithful to someone, but like, they're like, but you're the type of girl we'd want to date. Like you're independent, like you're funny, you're successful. And I'm like, I'm right here. Like, so like, if you want to date me, I'm right right here. here. But like, if I ever said yeah I'm just gonna go fuck like all these right. guys and like I'm just I'm not ready they'd be like you're a whore you're a whore like you can't fuck you it's just such a double standard and all I can say is like it literally all has to do with like everyone always asks me like how do you preserve your reputation all this shit mm-hmm. you just gotta look at yourself how are the fuck you feel and if you yeah. feel good about yourself fuck whatever you want to do like just go for it and any guy that yeah. can't handle like your body count which he'll never find out because you're never so fucking telling them don't ever tell someone your body I count. don't understand why girls would ever dude when girls are like what do i tell him my body count is you say go fuck yourself none of your business yeah i'd be like that you're such a weird you like you make them feel stupid right. like ew that's so weird why would you ask that i would never ask what yours and, is like you make them feel so immature like oh yeah. god like you're like still what on are that you in shit? high school like Literally. what are you in college you want to know my body count that's so weird tell me have what okay wait your star sign what are you aren't you a scorpio i remember scorpio. hannah like backhandedly being like yes. you're a fucking scorpio you psycho <laughs> um uh, uh, yes, what November is like 4th is you? my birthday. What is it like um, Scorpios? So we're very like mysterious. So like mm. we're never going to really let you know how we're feeling about you. Ooh. We're the most sexual sign. Oh. But we're vi- like you wouldn't really know it. Like unless you are the person having sex with us. Oh. We're not going to like put it out. And so it's like kind of like a little bit of a surprise I feel like. Oh. And we can be very cold like so like when I'm done with someone I'm done with them like I really don't ever think about them again but if I care about them I'm gonna be very empathetic like I'm gonna be all about them but if you do piss me off and I get to that point like done I- I'll delete your number like I don't and, and it won't phase me what were you, what are you like as a girlfriend so it's interesting because I am like a girlfriend type of girl like I love having boyfriends and I think it's because I think girls are always mean and it's so hard to like ever have like a good group of girlfriends or have like a a best friend who's a girl. And I mean, not saying that I'm not a girl's girl because I deep down really am. Like I love my girlfriends. I love that. But like in high school and college, I always felt like, okay, well, my boyfriend's the one that really has my back. So I love being someone's girlfriend and I've definitely stayed in relationships too long just because I liked the comfortability of being someone's girlfriend but I'm not I mean I'm a good girlfriend but I'm probably not the best like I'm definitely toxic at some points <laughs> like what are you mean toxic like do you try to make them jealous like what's your go-to that if you if I asked your ex-boyfriends like what is Paige like like what are they telling me so my all my ex-boyfriends I also I speak to all of them except one and I would say I've, I have like five real relationships okay. that I was in I talk to all of them. They're all good friends except one who's like engaged and like who knows where he is. Um, But I I can be a cold hearted bitch. Like I really I really can. I've been cheated on a ton and I am kind of like okay you made me feel like this. Just wait how much awful you're going to feel when I do it to you. So like I'm like a get even kind of like you're going to fuck me over. Just wait. I yeah, kind of <laughs> love the scariness that's coming yeah, out. Not great. Slowly <laughs> lowering, like I am a get even type of bitch. We I, tell me. I about, had a guy that. Oh yeah, tell I had me. a. Gu- I have a guy that I'm like talking to right now, and one of the best text messages that he ever sent to me. He says, he said, um, "Every day I'm a little bit more scared of you," and I said, <laughs> "Perfect, <laughs> perfect." Go that's how I want it, dude. Wait, okay. Yeah. Tell me about you getting cheated on. 
Um, so I've been cheated on. I mean, I, I dated a guy in college. He definitely cheated on me, but like whatever. My first boyfriend in New York, I like would see him cheating on me. Like we'd be out at clubs and he would like leave and I'd like see him in an elevator with another girl. And like one time I threw him a birthday party in the Hamptons and I like walked in on him like making out with someone. I was just like, this is not Dude, not great. What, what do you say yeah. in those moments? <laughs> I was I mean, I was young. I was stupid. And it's right. funny because I feel like people like if they're watching me on the show or like my Instagram now, like I come off very confident and like high self-esteem. But I wasn't always I, and I'm not like I definitely have insecurities, but it wasn't just born like that. Like I've gone through shit that makes you get like that. So that was definitely a relationship where I was like, this is this is crazy. Like, why am I living? Did you ever get cheated on that you were like blindsided? Um, no, like every time I've gotten cheated, I have a really crazy gut instinct. And every time I've been cheated on, it was, I was like, I know something crazy is going on. Like, let and me, have you let stayed me check up once on you it. found out they were cheating? I have before. Yeah. Where was your, do you remember like, where was your mental state with that? Was it just staying? Cause not you great. needed to get a, <laughs> not great, not great at all. Not great. I have stayed too. When I found out someone was cheating and it was just like, for me, it was more of like, I need to figure my shit out. Like I was mm-hmm. living with this person. Like I need to like somewhat fake that I'm, it's going to, we're going to make it all work while I get like right. my logistics figured out. But like, was yours more to like get even or were you just like, whatever, I'll just like keep being in this relationship. It was more like, okay, our friend, we all have the same friends. We're going out every weekend. Like, who am I going to hang out with if right. I'm not dating this person? And it's such an like immature thought and it's such a like unworthy feeling and just basically having no self-confidence that I could go out and get a new boyfriend who's probably 10 times better in a week. Totally. But when you're in that situation, you just feel like a piece of shit and you're like in your bed and you're like, what am I like? I'm leaving him to do what like lay and cry in my own bed like by myself so dude, isn't it crazy because I love that you're saying that like on the show you do come off like the baddest bitch and you're so confident <laughs> walking around in your perfect outfits yeah. I'm like fuck you Con- I try really hard you know and, and it but it works like you literally I've Thank bought you. things that you post on your Instagram because you like are so good at marketing clothing because Thank they're you. all affordable and you yeah. make them look so high-end like you're amazing at that but Thank you you exude this confidence and I think it's really cool that you say like you used to not be that way and I've been open about that on my show too like I wasn't just like born and I was like what's up I'm a bad bitch like you go through shit and I think my therapist had like punched me in the head one day when she was like look at all your old relationships and if you look at when they were toxic usually it's because like your relationship is a mirror and like you didn't like who you were and so you were accepting like shitty stuff because you felt shitty about yourself and now think about yourself going into like any relationships you probably are at more point in your life where like you know who you are you know what you want you know what you deserve and so you would never date that person now ever yeah I'm such a different like being single right now and 28 and like now being in the career I'm in I'm such a different single person and that was like one of the reasons I wanted to get single because I was like what would I be like because I know I wouldn't be the way I was when I was 25 like falling all over whoever And there's definitely times where like I'll meet a guy and he doesn't like me back and I'll have that like let's cry about it for like a day and then I'll be like wait I'm a bad fucking bitch and like his loss and it's more about him than it is about me. I had a therapist say to me one time like you let people pick you. Why don't you start picking who you want to date? And I was like I was like okay. Okay. (laughs) And it like really spoke to me. I was like you're so right. I let these like losers come in and do whatever. But there is something about like dating the bad boy when you are younger that I feel like you have to do. Dude you have to tell us about your drug dealer. (laughs) Everyone's like, hold up, what? Dude, on FaceTime, I'm like, Paige, like, let's go through, like, college history. Like, did you have a boyfriend? She was like, yeah, like, not the best choices. Like, I like the bad boy. Like, I dated a drug dealer. I'm like, so what? what? Tell me about it. So, so, like, I dated this guy in college for, like, a hot second. And I think it's because my high school boyfriend, who I dated, like, senior year of high school, freshman year of college, a little bit of sophomore year, was so perfect. Like, the most amazing boyfriend my first love like everything about him and the way he loved me was amazing Mm. 
And there's just a part of me that was like, go the opposite there's gotta direction. Be, there's got to be something crazy out here. And I found a guy who was just, I think it was a bookie. He was definitely a drug dealer at one point. And like I was driving in his like dope car <laughs> one day. And I was just like, how did I get here? <laughs> we were getting pulled over by the cops. I had like a fake ID because I wasn't 21 at the time. Right. I had a fake ID in my purse. I was so nervous. And like, I'm a good girl. Like, I don't get pulled over. I've never been arrested. I don't have tattoos. Like, I'm scared of authority. Like, this is not me. We're getting pulled over. He looks at me and he goes, don't say a fucking word when they come come over. I don't know what I have in my car, but act oblivious. And I just like looked at him and I was like, okay. (laughs) The police came. They, like, gave us a speeding ticket. We drove off. But it was in that moment that I was just like, nope. Not me. I tried it. Not me. I'd like to go back to being good again. Like, Dude. But I learned a lot. Okay. That is so crazy. We have so many similarities. Hearing you say that story, I knew Mm -hmm. after you were going to say that moment when you pushed it too far and there's authorities involved, you're like, not fucking cool. I had a boyfriend that I dated in high school and he was the definition of a bad boy and yeah. um I met him I'm pretty sure on like Facebook and like he went to the <laughs> public school and like I went to the oh uh, right wait that's such a thing too like Meeting, if friending. you went to the private school and you're like I'm gonna date a public school boy because like I'm bad. I'm bad you know? I'm the baddest <laughs> of the bad and yeah. so I'm at this like preppy ass high school that my parents couldn't afford like I had a Mm -hmm. scholarship for high school and I'm at this school I couldn't afford a car all these bitches are driving around in Maseratis and Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to like the comfortability of like I want to be wait was yours all girls no mine was like a private boarding school okay with like these rich little dicks I was gonna go to an all-girls school and I was like I'd probably end it all if I went there so no I went all girls oh I could so see you at all girl yeah did you have a uniform yeah of course I went Catholic school my entire life high school was all girls oh my god yeah. so I, I wore I didn't I wore a uniform my whole life until I got to college and then I was like what do people wear to school dude, like, it's so funny when I say I went to Catholic school K through eight and whenever I talk about wearing that like the plaid skirt and the thigh highs guys are like oh my god I can't I wish I could see a picture I'm like no I was hideous shut up it wasn't hot <laughs> it was like disgusting it was just I was like I wore Doc Martens <laughs> were like my school shoe I was like I like I, I had, like shower. saddle shoes like I was yeah. like what like all girls were just it's disgusting you don't I was wear like, I didn't shave my legs till friday like you don't want to see a pic so i'm in high school i start dating this bad boy and i will never forget my parents were at like my brother's hockey game and i was gonna sneak out and have my first date with this guy he picks me up in this bmw and i'm like oh my god so hot i get it something about a bmw something about okay and then something about a man with earrings and a backwards hat okay yeah (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so i get in and we're driving to his house and i will never forget this moment he's driving so slow and I'm like, why are you driving so slow? And he's like, oh, because I have a DUI. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm wet. And I <laughs> like it, a part of me was like so excited about it. But a part yeah. of me was like kind of terrified. And I dated yep. this kid on and off for like two years. And my parents were doing everything they could to keep me away from him. I would like put my mm-hmm. phone in my mailbox because they had the tracker on me. And then I would like leave my house. Shut yeah. Up. My mom would wake up in the middle of the night, check to see my location. I'd be at home. <gasps> Meanwhile, oh I'm like fully out of God. Dude, so bad. Wait, it, genius, genius though. Genius. Dude, it was genius <laughs> until I told, I think I've told this story before, but like it was genius until I'm on Amazon or whatever. I was on eBay back then. It was eBay. And I'm trying to buy one of those like fire escape ladders so I could <laughs> climb out of my, so I could climb out of my room. And I didn't have a credit card at the time. So my dumbass uses my dad's card thinking he wouldn't see. And he comes in one day being like, so you're the one buying the ladder. And I'm like, <laughs> dad, what? Stop. I'm like, you're okay, like, I just want to do some home improvement. Man, I'm trying to help you. I'm like, Dad, this is for the family safety. Stop. He's like, You're We're doing a fire drill Dude. at 6 p.m. Be there, Dad. <laughs> So, so how dark, and then I'll tell the story one day fully on the podcast, but it got so dark and he was so troubled and I, I think he's out of rehab now, but oh, there good was, for him. Well, yeah, good for him. There was one <laughs> situation where he 
there was a huge event that happened. He was put into a coma. And I remember oh my dri- it was so bad. I was driving down to the hospital, asked my parents if I could go see him and like seeing him on a ventilator. And I had just gotten accepted to be you and like got my scholarship, like work so hard. And I, yeah, like, I kind of had that moment in the car, like you being like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. it, it's the bad boy is so fun until it's yeah. too far bad boy that you're like, this is not where yeah. I plan my life to go. And like, there's I something in your gut yeah. that you're just like, this isn't yeah. this isn't my something path in your like, gut, tried and then it. also something yeah. seeing the guy on the ventilator you're like this is so yeah. fucking sad but also like I gotta go do my thing so bad yeah. boy stories are like every girl that thinks it's fun it's really not like it's fun for a thrill of a night not yeah. for a relationship looking back on it now it's can be such a pivotal moment in like the way you become a woman because I really feel like when I dated this guy I was like what 1920 like right. I wasn't a woman of like the way I think of things now but I always think like wow what if he really trapped me and that was my path like for the future like thank god I had the wherewithal or like the family to be like yo get your shit together you're done with him like you're moving on but I could see how some girls get trapped in that yeah. and then they're in like mental abu- or like mentally abusive relationships yeah. or physically abusive. And that's terrifying. It sounds like you have. Uh, uh, do you have siblings? I do. I have an older brother. OK, I do, too. And and you're close with your family, right? My brother is Everything. like m- my best friend. I actually say like people that don't get along with their siblings. I'll never understand it. Can't trust him. I can't trust them. And I feel bad saying it because there's so many people that don't fuck with their siblings. Yeah. Like my brother is exact same personality as me, way funnier than me and like 10 times smarter. He's a lawyer. And oh. they're like, what happened with Paige? <laughs> You're like, I'm just trying to figure it out. Shut up. Please stop. No, <laughs> like, I turn, agree with Like you. turn on my show. Um, yeah, but I just like I'm very close with my family and my brother is like my best friend. I love that because I think like well, I'm, I also have an older brother and he's mm-hmm. literally like my best best friend and I have an older sister and everyone doesn't even know I have an older sister my older sister and I when I were younger would fight all the time just because it was like sisters yeah but she is also my best best friend and like when you have that family dynamic and then you love your parents when you Mm -hmm. have these toxic relationships like I've learned like you're so fucking lucky and we're so fortunate to have that relationship with our family that some people don't have and it it does you're right it is scary to think about how close I was at times and my family's pulling me back being like what the fuck are you doing like my brother yeah. had so many conversations and I'm sure you too of like yeah. Paige you're so cute that you because like your your parents can tell you like yeah. that you're fucking up and you're like okay right and it really isn't until my brother will be like yo yep do we have to have a conversation my brother has actually every boyfriend I've ever had he's been like yeah, you can have fun with him. This isn't, isn't it. it. Oh! Like, cu- cut it off pretty soon because this guy's going to get upset and, like, obsessed with you and we're just not having not ha- him. Like, Dude, is that not the worst, though, when your brother yeah. says it and then you're like, well, and now like, you ruined Damn. it for me. Yeah, I'm like, fuck, now I can't hang out with him. My brother will, like, make fun of whoever I'm <sighs> dating, like, to me. And then when I'm talking to the guy you in can't. my head is, like... <laughs> brother saying all these mean things and i'm like god damn it gary i like, hate it dude my brother yeah. does the same and i'm like can you please just keep your comments until i come to you because like i like this <laughs> yeah. one i think he's like it's so cute that you think that but yeah. i think anyone listening that isn't close to their family this isn't a put down this is more of like a, yeah. i think then i always suggest like finding i do feel like those people then have those friends that are like mm-hmm. family and yeah. relying on anyone that is around you i've always like my mom's always said it like whenever we say something like we have no ulterior motives. What would be yeah. our ulterior motive to telling you like someone's not doing something in your best interest? Yeah. It's just out of love. And so yeah. if you're ever feeling maybe like you're in a toxic situation or you're pulling away from people that do love you, listen to them because you probably yeah. don't have a clear view of things and they do. At and all. What, 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 your mom doesn't want to fuck your boyfriend. Yeah. Like there's no ulterior my mom, motive. My mom always says, if I can't tell you, Who's going to tell you? So true. And like for so many things, like I always say like, mom, if like I'm going to get fat, like tell me I'm getting fat. And she's like, if I can't tell you, who are you going to call and ask? I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're like, thanks, mom. Thank I really appreciate the honesty. Yeah. No, it's so true. Um, Let's talk about guys and money and buying on dates and shit like that, because I want to hear your mm-hmm. take on 
how much of a turnoff is it if a guy takes you on a date? Well, first of all, have you ever had a guy take you on a date and ask you to split the bill? Not on a first date. Okay. But I've definitely like bought dates that I felt like this is like still part of the courting situation and I don't feel like I should be paying for this, but like go off, do your thing. And how did he ask you to pay or split? So I was on a date one time and I would say this was like our third, fourth date, like very in very new in the dating situation. Like we weren't exclusive. We weren't like anything, but we were going on dates and like a normal fucking human. When the check came, like I like went and grabbed for my bag and I'm used to like like a little fake classic. Yeah. Tale as old as time. Like (laughs) you grab for your bag. So I'm grabbing for my bag, waiting for him to be like, oh, my God, stop. He doesn't say, oh, my God, stop. So, like, I have to keep proceeding. Like, now I'm taking my wallet out. Now I'm opening my wallet. Now my card is in my hand. And I say, oh, my God, like, let me get this one. And waiting for him to be like, absolutely not. That's crazy. Like, this is our third date. He doesn't say anything. So I, like, take the check. I pay for it. And, like, it it was fine. It was just, like, a dinner. But in my head, I was like, I'm all for like equal rights and women and I'm down to split things. I'm down to pay for things when like we're in a relationship. Like, absolutely. And I like being able to buy my own shit because I hate feeling like I owe someone something. But like at the end of the day, you're trying to date me. Like, that's why we're going on dates. We're hanging out. Like, we're seeing if this could be a relationship. And like, come on, dude. It's one dinner. It's like the third date. The third date's pretty early. You're pretty like, early, right? I, I know that so many people will ask me, like, fuck, like, I'm in a relationship and I'm just trying to find the balance of, you know, like, him paying versus me paying. I feel the same way. And, like, I, I think that's totally different. Totally different. But I do feel like when you're in the beginning stages, like, if you're asking me out on a date, you're paying. Yeah. And I know maybe that right. sounds like a little stuck up but like I don't give a fuck like if a guy's asking me on a date I'm shouldn't even yeah. have to bring my wallet because I'm like it took me the- two hours to get ready for this yes my, my makeup, makeup yeah. is 10 grand <laughs> like if I threw all of this away and had to go buy it it's been five thousand dollars you can fucking pick up this a hundred dollar check for some dumb pasta you bought me thank like, you Thank you. And I know you make more than us. Have you heard about the wage gap? You fucking make more than me. (laughs) Fuck yourself. No, it's so true. And I, I think there's, you're right. There's a line of like, I think any guy listening, even if you, there's one thing, one, I think for at least the first like five plus dates, like it sucks. Even if you have to ask your parents for money, like you should be paying. And two, I think that something to me that is just such a turn on that is so underrated and it really isn't that much more expensive. Any guy Mm -hmm. listening for advice, if you're sending her an Uber, send her an Uber black. If a black (sighs) Escalade rolls up to pick you up, Paige, tell me you're not already trying to fuck this guy. Uh I'm now (laughs) reconfiguring like do I have to wait for the third date because this was really nice like we've set the bar so fucking low for men it actually is infuriating because a simple uber even like saying like let me get you an uber I'm like oh like he wanted to get me an uber but like sending a black escalade to pick me up to take me out on a date and you want to know something i actually haven't had someone do that for me in like years okay so any men listening <laughs> yeah. just start sending uber like blacks send, to pages apart. just just start sending them i'm not we're not even going anywhere it's, just keep them rolling it's up so underrated and i feel like it's yeah, literally it like a difference between 12 20 something dollars and it can totally change the vibe of the night and i know it's superficial but it doesn't girls can be be superficial anyone is superficial when you get something nice that you're not expecting it's like oh my yeah. god like it's also really like it's like human instincts like yeah. of course we want to be equal to the guys but there is like an innate feeling of like we want to kind of be we yeah. want to feel like we're being taken care of a little and like totally we want you to be like manly and macho and like it's not about the money it's just like you thought of us right you want us to be safe like you want to in some way protect us and like help us out like send the uber send the fucking like it's uber. not it's thirty dollars. It'll like, benefit you the later down the line. We're t- trust, trust us. We'll take care Paige of you. Just said herself. Maybe the three date fucking situation may go down to the first date. Just like, send me of an Uber. Uber. Totally. Okay, I want to ask you 
I my, yeah. I wrote the question as are you a lover or are you a fighter page in the bedroom I mean do you like loving sex do you like aggressive sex like what's your sex life like okay so I like to have a balance love but like the first couple times I don't be loving because I'll be like Ugh. you're so weird I don't know you <laughs> <laughs> like don't kiss my forehead I'll actually throw up but like if it's my boyfriend at some point, yes, I would I wanna like make love. Totally. But like in the beginning, I'm probably a little bit more like aggressive in terms of like a light choke. Yeah. Light choke. Come on. Light choke, but don't wanna like pass out. Have you No, I don't wanna pass out. <laughs> I have some friends that like they're like, I passed out and I'm like that's scary Whoa. but they love it totally do you because I remember talking about it on an episode and people thought it was fascinating like well one have you ever like been in love before okay I I feel bad like because I don't know how many right. ex-boyfriends are oh. gonna listen to this I have been in love before okay. I think I've really truly only been in love once I think I've loved the person that I'm dating like I love them as a human they're a great human but I wasn't in love with them right and then I feel like I've had relationships where I loved the relationship because it was either like so toxic or so like what's gonna happen next but I didn't love the person I think so totally when fair. like both are aligned where like I love the relationship and I loved the person I really only think I've I've only ever felt that once and I think that's why I'm such a relationship girl because like I want to be in love like right. I can't wait for that I just don't think I've had that in a really long time I think that's profound I think that's and you're being honest and I yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with being in a relationship especially at our age Maybe as we're getting older, the next relationship mm -hmm. you're going to get into, you'll probably want to like, you're going to be like, I want to be in love. The next time I'm yeah. getting in, I'm going to be in love. But like in your yeah. 20s, I don't think I've had relationships. I know I'm not fully in love with yeah. that person, but I don't think there's then any pressure to be like, well, then you have to break up with them if you're not in love with them. Because yeah. each rela you get something from each relationship. But I do A think thousand percent. isn't it crazy, though, when you are in love, the difference in the sex yeah so I actually haven't really been in love in love since and I think it was like my first love got it so really since I was like 20 <sighs> yeah it's wild though to like I've said like this one person that I dated like the sex was so intense when we were having sex at times and then so hot other times but like yeah the a bit for ever since having that person where I was like holy shit like it I hate using the word like making love but like yeah the the hot sensual yeah intense, the passion right to be able yeah. to have that sex and then turn it off and do another round that's like sexy and kinky and hot yeah. it's hard then to then I've gone on to new relationships that I've had some boyfriends that I'm like we only have like semi-dirty sex and there's no passion yeah and once you have the passion in sex it's hard to move forward in a relationship and have a guy that doesn't do that and there's so I've had like boyfriends where like we have the dirty crazy sex and you're so into it and then they want to switch it to like the love making kind and I'm like oh I just don't want to <laughs> right because you're not like you're I don't not see there. you like right. that yeah right. you're not there and I feel so bad but it's it's all it's, yeah and that's why I do think for me like it is kind of a weird thing but getting older like that's kind of my sense of like am I really into this person if I can do yeah. both because you're so right I get the ick when they try to then do the love making and I'm like I yeah. really wish you would just fuck me like I'm like a little slut yeah, and like, just let's get over with like yeah like no. put your hand over my mouth yeah, and like gag enough. me <laughs> like tell me to shut the fuck up and let's keep it moving Straight like up. We Straight have dinner up. to get to. Um, yeah. Okay. Have you ever, I was going to ask you, have you ever had to go about, a lot of girls want to know, like, what do I do if I want to figure out, like, what are we? And I've always tell girls, like, well, you don't ask what we are. That's yeah. just so wrong. So not the yeah. right way to go If you want to get dumped real quick, ask, ask him you. what you are. <laughs> if you're trying to get out of it, a thousand percent ask him what, what you are. What are we, Jeremy? And he's like, you're <laughs> disgusting. That's you're leaving is what we are. <laughs> But, like, have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you needed to ask a guy what you are? I think we kind of said both no, but. Um, no, I don't think so. And anyone I've ever, like, made, like, they've been, become my actual boyfriend, it's all happened the same way. Where one day we start hanging out and then we just Boom. hung out every single day until we were like, yeah, we're dating. 
I've actually never met someone. I've never dated someone who I wasn't friends oh, with first, Oh, that's really. interesting. It's interesting. And I don't know if I recommend it. I'm still testing that theory right. out. <laughs> the guy that I'm seeing um, now, we fully were not friends prior. I think almost every guy I actually have ever dated, I never was friends with them prior. Interesting. That so we're like inter- opposite with yeah. that. And I don't know if and mine have worked in the past either. So I don't uh, know. Yeah. So we don't know. We have this hypothesis out there that we don't right. know what's true. Um, We need to talk about, this is like our big wrapping up, caddy girls and girls yeah. and just all things. And I know that you in Summer House have dealt with like so many girl dramas. Mm-hmm. And I think so, it's such an underrated topic. Like we can talk about guys all day, but really like girl drama is so fucking hard to navigate. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you're saying you have had friends in the past that like you you are more almost a girlfriend with like best friends with your partner rather than having huge groups of girls because it I agree it is hard to navigate girl groups and I've never been someone that has like 20 friends I I want my close circle and that's that but like what is your dynamic with girlfriends so I'm definitely a girl's girl like right. I'm very girly if like I have like girlfriends you know like I have their back like I'm down for them totally but girls like just innately like when we all get in a room it's automatic like look them up and down like is this my competition like where guys get into a room and they're like what's, what's up, up bro? bro like dapping each other up and, and it's like I wish I I wish we had that and I don't know why we don't but it's already automatic competition but I'm the type of girl that like if I meet you, I like you initially until I until you do something and then I don't like you. Totally. Where I feel like a lot of girls are prove to me on like why I should like you. And it's like it's very off putting to me. I agree. I went to an all girls high school um, and I had a really great group of girlfriends in high school and I didn't deal with that much cattiness. I mean, we definitely had it. But I think it prepared me a lot for like the real world. I also can pick up in like three seconds when a girl is talking about me like at a party. I'm like, I absolutely know that she's talking about me. And like now I can read her lips. And my friends now will be like, how do you know that? And I'm like, I went to an all girls high school. This was the cafeteria. Right. Like I know, I know I when know a bitch up. is talking about me. So it's definitely hard. And then it's just we're in like I not to like sound like, oh, my God, toot my own horn. Right. But like. I'm in like a very different career path. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's like sometimes girls get a little bit jealous, but I'm like, I'm like a loser at heart. (laughs) Like, you like come over and like, let's watch a movie. Like I'm not like exactly how I am on my Instagram, like always perfectly made up and like whatever. But I think it's just weird. Like girls just normally have like a jealousy streak. And of course there's times where I get jealous of other girls. Absolutely. But I always see it like if you're my friend, and I'm successful like I want you to be successful and like if I'm eating you're all eating like we're doing you know and it's like me and my one girlfriend talk about this all the time like if I'm going out with my friends I want them to look hot too what like I don't want to be the only hot one when we're going out like I yeah like you like no I'm gonna tell you that outfit sucks right and like let's change Borrow my because clothes. I want you to look good totally. where I've been with girls that are like wear that wear something else and when I'm like I know I don't look good in that and Dude, that's fucked how up. fucked is that with you're so right I remember in college I had this one girl that was like so conscious of wanting to be the hottest girl and it was so yeah. obvious when I would watch her tell some girls what to wear and then I would be like yo like you should probably wear this instead like come borrow my clothes because I was watching her girls that feel insecure when they're around hotter girl listen I have yeah. been in rooms that I'm like why does she look like that what's that yeah. what is happening oh my, oh my god in New York it's oh. like you walk into a bar everyone's five nine and with Wilhelmina right. and you're like cool Whoa. like in, <laughs> being short in New York I'm like all of a sudden I feel like a little fucking toad I'm like I'm me gross. and my me and one of my girlfriends always say like it's now about being short and funny and, Thank you. Now I'm going to feel better about my life. <laughs> Dude, being around tall girls immediately. Yeah, I'm like, I can't go anywhere without heels now. Like I yeah, have to I'm always. like, why is my torso <laughs> two inches? <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's like there's no doubt I all the time have felt insecure going into rooms with girls yeah. and like, oh my god you obviously size yourself up but like girls that try harder to make you feel I'm gonna read you some questions because this is all like yeah. girl code shit yeah that I feel like you probably have dealt with like a lot of this this is from the daddy gang you guys wrote these in um a lot of it is like what to do about like dating etc but here we go okay um is it okay for friends to reserve guys even if they're not dating them like to call a guy like to be like I want that one like no one's allowed to touch him like do you think that's fair if you guys are all meeting this I think if you see a guy and you're like I really I think I really like that guy I want to try and talk to him then yes because if one of my girlfriends says to me I really want to talk to this guy automatically I'm like okay so then Great. I'll never talk to him like you're all, I actually am automatically not attracted to that guy because my friend likes him totally. yeah so like if you want to dibs a guy and your friend's like no I want to talk to him that's weird. weird like why would you even be competing for the same guy in the first I place? completely agree and I think the only time that it would be no is if she does that and for the next few weeks if you guys see them out nothing happens then like yeah. the next season all of a sudden you're on to a new guy and it was like okay I think I'm gonna try for him like I'm kind of yeah. vibing but it's like if they never hooked up obviously yeah and if he and it's known that like that girl or that guy is not liking your friend you have to tell your friend like okay get over it he doesn't like you totally which my friends have done that to me a million times right. they're like get over over it <laughs> you're like okay okay fine fine um Sorry. people literally this is like not even a question but we'll just answer it people kept asking if i had sex with him on the dl before he started dating my friend do i have to tell her so she knows yes yeah yeah i think even if you made out with right? him you have even if you I, just want to date yeah i had a girlfriend one time match with a guy on raya texted me like his picture instagram or whatever on it was like i'm going out on a date with him and i go cool have so much fun gotta let you know three years ago i slept with him one time didn't mean anything we don't speak and she's like cool great and i'm like okay great no i think transparency <laughs> yeah, no because if he tells yeah and if he tells her first then you look like a sneaky weirdo bitch. okay yeah. um girls that think they're just being straightforward to you but are really just rude do you know those girls yeah that they're, they're like, like I'm, I'm just real I'm, just all, I'm real I'm honest I'm just I'm all, I'm authentic I'm myself and I'm like you're I'm a like, cunt bitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think dealing with those type of girls I always just let I kind of feel like I know one of the girls on your show that I think of with this I'm not yeah. gonna say her name but like okay. girls that are rude sometimes even though yep. they're trying to come off real there's mm -hmm. no point in going at them because they're in their own world. If they're being mm -hmm. rude to you, pretending they're being straightforward, my advice is always just like kind of look at them like they have five heads and just no response. Yeah. And what my dad always used to tell me, and it's the best fucking line, is if someone's being an asshole to you and like saying something and trying to make you feel little, you just stare at them and you go, what's your point? <laughs> and then think about wow. it and then they're like and then they're yeah. like uh well I was just and you're like okay well what's your point what's yeah. your point and then my mom boom. wow I feel like our parents would even be friends because <laughs> my mom gives the advice of so what do you mean by that she's like like because if you make someone explain then to you like, oh, then oh. they just automatically start sounding dumb because they don't even know so right? then they're like I just mean like and you're like I don't I don't, I don't get it. it. Gotta I don't go. get you. Bye. And there's a fine line between being real and just being an asshole. Like, Thank you. If you're going to hurt you. someone's feelings with your realness, keep it to your fucking self. Because totally. we probably didn't have to hear it in the first place. I completely agree. Okay. Would you ever hook up with a guy that your friend dated for two months? Um, probably not. Unless this guy was like, I was like, this is my soulmate. And I would definitely talk to my friend about it first. Like if she was like, oh, that's like I can't even. But if it was one of those guys that like she always liked, like, yeah, I don't I think friends and mixing guys is like gets very messy. I and agree. I don't ever really do that. I would never do that. Is it OK to date someone's ex if you aren't close, but you run in the same circle? Yes. Yeah, so I think know that girl. Anything. I agree. Nothing. Totally. Um, okay. Oh, how close of a friend do I need to be to give my opinion on their relationship or just never? So I have oh. a hard time with this because I have been documented giving oh. Hannah all my feels. Um, I think it, I think it depends on how close you are with your girlfriend, but there have been multiple times where my girlfriends have been like, Hey, snap the fuck out of it. 
he doesn't like you you're making yourself look stupid and now you're making all of us as like a girl group look stupid right and i have been like thank you you're correct but there is a line where like if your girlfriend's in like a toxic relationship and you talk so much shit about him and then like they get back together and then you have to be out at dinners like it's gonna be fucking awkward I like live my truth and I'm like you're better than this right I'll chill with him because it doesn't affect me I'm not the one dating him but you should know that you're better than this I agree I it's like I remember being in high school and I had such a hard situation it was I had a group it was four of us girls and we were all in the soccer team we were best friends we did everything together and one of our one of the girls was dating when we were freshmen she was dating a senior and he was like the hottest guy on cape yeah (laughs) so she so she hottest guy on (laughs) campus the whole thing and we found out he was like fully cheating on her and I remember my friend and I were like what do we do like this is so scary like we have to tell her and we were young innocent like freshmen at the time we're like oh my god we gotta tell her and I will never forget in hindsight we shouldn't have done it the way we did but like during lunch we like you wrote a letter (laughs) you were like dear Sam (laughs) Ronnie was at the club So, dude, we should have. So, I will never forget. We bring her to a bench on campus, and we all sit down. How poetic! (laughs) There's like grass around us, and we, in our true minds, were like, "Oh my god!" Like she definitely has no idea. And we were like, "We have to tell you something." We told her, and she looked at us so obvious. All of a sudden, like, kind of pulls back a little bit. So defensive so doesn't believe us stands up and is like i'm going to talk to him he walks out right of like one of the buildings and they make eye contact and she walks to him and for the next like few months it was really awkward between us because she didn't believe us until a picture came out at like a school dance of him like fully tongue down the throat and then we were awkwardly like sipping our slurpees in the corner like whoa that's an interesting photo (laughs) that's weird where'd we get that but see i've always been the type of girl where like if my girlfriends ever came to me and were like we think he's cheating on you i'm like let's go well, get the facebook out well how are we gonna figure it out Five like computers. Me, yeah yeah like someone start fucking an fbi agent like here we go let's <laughs> so get to the bottom of this the, shit yeah like, but what are we doing here it's, that's why if my friends ever came to me oh he's cheating i'm like same vibe but i do think that is where then i learned like when they're in a toxic relationship yeah. most girls probably have a little feeling that they are yeah. and they didn't she didn't want to hear that information yeah she probably knew she thought it was the best she, she could get and then later on she ended up spending her entire college on and off with this guy and like he fully broke her heart and kept cheating and like now she spent like eight years of her life with this dude and he kept serial cheating i think though from that at a very young age I learned like I'm gonna sometimes you just gotta you gotta be aware of who you're addressing I can't help myself but I'm if I know someone's getting cheated on I'm telling them as a friend I feel like that's my duty if I don't really know the girl I'm not going out of my way to tell a girl me neither your boyfriend's fucking on you like don't give a fuck not unless she's one of my girlfriends that I talk to every single day or like every week even if it's one of my girlfriends I don't talk to that much but she's like my girl totally. I'm telling her totally. if she's an acquaintance I'm not getting involved in that whatsoever I agree also like I've learned through dating like for what however long I've been dating like 15 years always trust your gut boom always and like there's so many times where I'm like damn am I a psychic because I need to trust my gut more and like I've been right and any girl that is wondering should I tell my friend go tell your friend but then also be like I'm down for whatever you want to do I'm here to handle it with you yeah but once you tell them once you don't need to keep harping on it because then if they do stay they're choosing to stay you know what I mean right so absolutely like you don't bring it up again and you're like whatever your decision is I back you up because you're my friend but here's totally the facts. having a friend that you had a fallout with would you send your ex best girlfriend a happy birthday or no nah? no 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 <laughs> if we fight and like it no, no. fuck you no <laughs> like literally not at all I'm like not texting an ex best friend like what um no roommate fights when you still have to live together post fight and you're not making up like what do you do about fighting with roommates go to your boyfriends no <laughs> stay there <laughs> stay there hide bunker yeah, up just like be gone it's, it's yeah. interesting because I've learned through having lived with like a bunch of soccer girls in college post-college girls like I've definitely learned a balance of 
fight but like keep in mind that you do have to wake up near that person the next right. day if you don't have a boyfriend um but it also does come to a point where like have sit down conversations not one-offs and then walking away like hey let's like schedule time to sit down and like let's just talk yeah. through this because like you literally have to live with that person it's actually really interesting that you say that because my ex used to always give me that advice if I was ever fighting with a friend. Like being really adult about it, almost like you work together. Like, hey, can we schedule a time rather than just like walking in their room being like, hey, let's talk. Because like scheduling a time is like, I'm serious. Like I want this to work and I want us to like, I want to hear you out. Totally. I want you to hear me. Like there is a different uh, just vibe with it. Yeah, you just have to be way more respectful because it's, it's yeah. now past friendship. You don't right. have to be best friends, but you do have to live together. Oh, I feel like you have this. This can be our last one. Okay. When your best friend or just a friend is always copying and trying to one up you with like your outfit, boys. Bro- mm-hmm. There was one girl on the show that used to come out of the room dressed exactly yeah. like. Which I actually always feel so bad yeah. for that because she is the nicest girl ever. And like she really didn't copy me as much as it well, really did look. I agree. And I also we just could had tell, similar style. I could tell with her too. Like it was a form of like she looked up to you. She loved your yeah. style and you like I inspired almost- her. Yeah, I almost felt like an older sister. Boom. But and, like, like, I loved when she would wear similar things because I'd be like, you look fucking great. Right. Like, wear it. But have you ever gotten mad at, like, any one of your friends for, like, trying to always copy you? Yeah, I've definitely had friends who are, like, always trying to, like, one up and be like, yeah, no, I have that too and I have that whatever. And it gets annoying. And I always talk to my mom about it. Mm-hmm. And she always, like, snaps me back to earth. And she's like, that's sad. Like, that's something in them that they're, like, insecure. Like, so let them just have it. So whenever someone's, like, trying to one-up, I'm always like, that's so good. Like, that's amazing. And then they almost kind of feel like, oh, "Oh, this is weird. And then they sometimes stop. Dude, I will never forget one of, like, the the dumbest, biggest fights I had with one of my ex-friends is I bought a pair of boots okay Mm -hmm. I bought a pair of boots that one of my friends was like oh my god I'm obsessed with this company like buy this boot bought the boot yeah one that like M Rada always wears or whatever okay and so I post on my story like wearing the boots going out and she texts me and she's like no she dms me and she goes what are what brand is that boot and I was like, oh, my God, it's like Schultz boots. You know those that brand? I know. Yeah, I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Schultz boots. Like, they're so cute. You was have- was Emrata was wearing those, like, cowboy almost looking yes. boots? Yes. yes. Okay. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, I tag, I, like, send it to her DMer. And I'm like, oh, my God, you have to check out the boot. And she, ta- she DMs me back. And also, like, DMing, like, we were fully living together. Yeah. And, <laughs> she's, and she's like, um, Alex, you know that I own that boot. I have had at that point fully never been going out with her. She had a boyfriend. I was going mm-hmm. out with my own. I was like, oh, oh, like, no, I, I didn't know that you had that boot. And yeah. it's a black boot that we I had. It was a black boot. No. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm so sorry. No, I didn't know. But like, that's great. Like, and then she was like, I can't believe that you bought that boot. You know that I have that boot. So then it transfers to texting. And we are no. going in a, she's fully beat. Like you are like, I can't believe this. Like, I just want one thing that's like mine. And like you post more on Instagram than me. And it's not fair that you have the boot now. And now everyone's going to know the boot as yours. And now I don't, I can't wear the boot. And this is so, and I was like, <laughs> there, it feels like there's something under this. It's like yeah, a little but bit. This is, bit yeah. This is something deeper. And, and I was like, deeper. and I was like, we never go out together. So like no one, we're never going to, and if you want to wear it, if we ever go out together, I won't wear the boot. Like yeah. it's a black boot. Like I'm, absolutely. Like, what and I was like I got three other types like it not it's word not, and it was just it went on for an hour and I remember calling my mom and my other best friend and I was like am I off on this like she's losing her shit over a boot and yeah it wasn't the boot it wasn't it just it wasn't the boot it, was- <laughs> it wasn't it was because like I have a girlfriend who anytime we ever go on a trip I pack quadruple the amount I would pack because I know this girl's not bringing anything yeah and like she's gonna want to wear clothes so she'll call me and be like I hope you <laughs> pack extra leather pants I'm like you're so annoying so but annoying. yes my luggage is over the weight that- because of you but if there was ever an outfit like there have been times when I've been away with her and I'll pack an outfit and I've never worn it tags are on it and I'll be like I want to wear it first, first. totally like because I picked this outfit out 
like and then you can wear it like absolutely totally it's all about just being respectful like, yeah me, and like having communication that's what i i remember just being like i will never wear it when you are wearing them you can right. always wear them like i was going above and beyond be like we're talking about a boot here like here we yeah. go and it was just it was an it was a moment of be, me being like she's clearly fe- feeling insecure about something and i'm gonna try to appease her in every way because this is a fight over a boot and there was clearly more that came out later and it was just one of those moments like with girls i agree i could give two fucks if my friends borrow lauren literally just borrowed my bra and underwear for a date the other night because she didn't have a cute enough fucking thong set and i'm like i don't care if people think that's gross like i don't care about that that, shit here's the thing i don't think that's gross right i don't think it's gross at all like if my girlfriend was like one time it was valentine's day and i lived with like one of my girlfriends and i was like fuck like i don't really have lingerie she pulled out these like crazy Everything. pieces i was like i was like i'm not old enough to even put that on <laughs> but thank you like, thank you if right? you're helping your girls out like to be the best they can be i don't fuck with you i agree i think to everyone listening like to wrap it up like eh, try to be a little less defensive around your girlfriends and even I've always said people that like are like I wish my friends would even listen to call her daddy like having an open communication about your sex life with your friends I'm sure I'm sure you one having a podcast and two being on summer house I bet has Mm -hmm. helped you almost like talk more about and be open more about your relationships and sex life with your friends and some girls can't have a conversation about like oh my god I gave him head last night because some girls are so judgy and if you're around girls like that find a new friend group seriously I have a group and I'll, this will be like the last yeah. thing I say about like friends I have a group of guy friends who are p- perfect like they really are the best guys ever and I watch them with each other and they hype each other up so much like no one is talking shit about anyone else in their guy group and I'm like this is like beautiful like it's really sentimental how much you guys fuck with each other and I I was like, girls should just be more like that. And now I'm like in a group and I have a bunch of girlfriends who like some of them are new girlfriends, some of them are old girlfriends. But it's so much more fun to hype each other up. And you have such a better time when you're out if you're like, that's the baddest bitch in the room and she's my fucking friend. Like rather than looking at her and being jealous because she looks so hot that night. Like you're going to have a night where you look the hottest. I wore an outfit one night out with like one of my best girlfriends and the bo- the boys that we were with were like Paige your outfit looks so good and she comes up and she goes Paige do a fucking twirl you look so good and I was like that's my best friend right? and you would like, do the that's same my girl. and you know when you yes. have a bomb outfit she's gonna have one one night yes. and you're gonna do the same fucking thing for her yes I will tell her I'm like you like run that way and I'm gonna take an Instagram video of your ass and I'm gonna post it cause you look so, so good. fucking good like why would I not do that for my friend I agree I think girls need to take a, like a page out of the guy's book Okay, on that one yeah. like be less stuck up be less in your head like we're all gonna get ours yeah you're fine just because one person is successful or like killing it at the moment doesn't mean that takes yours away because it's just different timing totally totally okay Paige yes we've almost been talking for two hours oh I God. can't explain to you how happy I am that you finally came on I was me thinking too. this is now so good. next it has to be me you and Hannah on and out. yes how oh my insane God. I mean we'll talk for 24 hours literally I um, think I'm nervous you need to t- tell us where we can find you on social media and then also tell us like about where summer house airs etc Okay, so my Instagram is page underscore DeSorbo. And then Summer House is Thursdays at 9 p.m. Oh, my God. Alex, okay. this was so fun. This was so fun. It wasn't scary, right? No, not at all. I feel like I was talking to, like, one of my girlfriends. Wait, right? Okay, yeah. I love you. Paige, thank you so much for love coming you. on. Daddy Gang, thank go you. show her love in her DMs. You guys are scary. People need to know that you guys <laughs> like them and support them. I love you. Thank you so much, Paige. Thank you. 